they don't want people saving money because they don't want people to have individual sovereignty. They don't want people to have economic well-being. They don't want people to have to be outside of being entirely reliant on the state. Right. So the gates of hell have opened <laughs> and Satan has come pouring out and he's uh, running the Bank of England. Why would you run into the bank and say, give me all my money if that thing that you're running to get is absolutely horrible, rancid garbage? You wouldn't want it. That's their solution. Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Talk Crypto. In the sequence of the last video where Max addressed the issue of money printing, in today's video, Max and Stacy go deeper down the rabbit hole to discuss Britain's attempt to stop bank runs by banning hoarding or hodling. If you haven't watched the last video from Max, make sure to watch it as well, as this is a continuation of that thought process. Back to today's video, Kaiser says authoritarianism has taken over government's actions towards their citizens, who still have faith in politics to give them free money. Their tactic to get rid of bank runs is to replace money with something that is totally worthless and that nobody wants, aka CBDCs. Kaiser adds they don't want people to save money or Bitcoin, as hodling allows people to become self-sovereign and not reliant on the state. Instead, their plan is to introduce CBDCs in order to surveil and control people's money and actions, imposing sanctions to those who don't abide. Let's listen to Max and Stacy as they give their take on Britain's last move towards totalitarianism, and how the US has become a distorted Madonna nation. But before we do, please consider subscribing to our channel, as we bring you daily content on the latest crypto news. And now, let's jump right into the video. So, uh, there was another headline I saw, which is Bitcoin hoarding will be banned over bank run fears. Ho hoarding, you know, holding, hodling is an economic, you know, that's a legitimate economic act, right? It's not only saving, but it's um, telling you something about the value, like it should be higher, <laughs> right? Like you're going to hold it until it's a worth you swapping some of it you can't have capitalism without capital and mm -hmm. you can't have uh, capital without um savers and you don't have savers unless you offer an interest rate on your savings and that's how you've built civilization for ten thousand years you know for thousands of years so what the england and britain are saying is that the new cbdc they don't want people saving money because they don't want people to have individual sovereignty. They don't want people to have economic well-being. They don't want people to have to be outside of being entirely reliant on the state. Right. So they're going to the CBDC will be heavily monitored and tracked, of course, by the state. And it'll also be like a frequent flyer mile that if you don't spend it within a certain amount of time, it expires because they don't want people to have any savings whatsoever, uh, because that would give them independence of an independence of thought. And politically, they don't want that. It's also, like I said, through this whole timeline, they decided that reward is great. Risk is bad. So let's just separate risk and put it over there. The fact that we know in the future, if we do, you know, build this economy, that the economy is going to be 10 times the size as it is today. Well, that's not fair. Like, why should we build the economy and those people in the future get to enjoy that economy? Let's like spend that money now because we're doing the work now. Let's uh, spend it like th this sort of notion that you could just ban what you don't want. So the bank run fears we fear a bank run, so we're going to ban a bank run. We're just going to ban it. You can't lose faith in us. That's what they're saying. You're not allowed to lose faith in us, which is like totalitarianism, right? That's that's authoritarianism. Yeah, it is authoritarianism. It is totalitarianism. That's what CBDCs are all about. That's what Britain is all about. And every time Britain comes out with a statement like, we really want to be the crypto, quote unquote, Bitcoin center of Europe and the world, you know, I've been saying for years now that that's a false statement. That will never happen in, in Britain. You know, they're always about uh, massively controlling the population from the state down. It's one of the most statist countries in the world, uh, highly, highly regulated. It's not a place of free speech whatsoever or many other freedoms. Uh, that's a misnomer. And uh, so here you have the CBDC, which, as you point out, is basically saying to the population that we don't want you to be in a position where 
or you have an in, the ability to politically take action against us in any kind of independent way. We want you to be entirely dependent on our money printing and the CBDC, which is a surveillance technology. Plus, it, it'll be like the we've mentioned this before, the credit score, the Chinese credit score, social credit score. If you're not uh, completely in sync with what the government wants you to do, your credit score is, goes down and you lose, let's say, access to buy flights on planes, you know, your, your passport expires and things like that. So it's a, it is totalitarianism without a question. And it's not surprising that a country like Britain would be all for totalitarianism. That this is a this is the mindset of this country now, uh, really set for a thousand years. It's never been different there. So uh, the, the point is, you're not going to be able to ban a bank run. Lebanon tried, they locked their banks, right? Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't stop what a bank run is. It's just utter loss of faith in you, the institutions, all, all that stuff. So you can't ban people from thinking, right? That's what they're saying, because th this is what they think about you. Right now, uh, obviously, we see uh, still the majority of the American population, I would say, have total faith that like they love hearing this guy with, you know, you know, this old guy on, on stage, they love hearing that they're going to get some more free money and they have faith that it's going to be able to buy an, a new house for them and drive up their property prices and they could buy a new Tesla. They, they think they still have faith that that's going to happen. But it's like they're saying they want to ban bank runs by introducing, by replacing money with shit. Now, excuse my language, but in other yes. words, they're, they say we don't we're going to get rid of bank runs because what we're going to give you is something that is a completely digital surveillance technology that we can cancel at any time that you can't save and we dictate how you spend it. So no one, of course, would there wouldn't be a bank run because no one would want that. They're like saying we're going to ban bank runs because we're going to turn the money into rancid meat that nobody would want, not even a starving dog. That's how we're going to stop bank runs. Why would you run into the bank and say, give me all my money if that thing that you're running to get is absolutely horrible, rancid garbage? You wouldn't want it. That's their solution, to get rid of anything that's of value and whatsoever and replace it with their draconian authoritarian state-sponsored terrorism. Well, in a way, I mean, the, the article does mention Bitcoin and that says, like, they don't want a situation like Bitcoin where people hold it and 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 they hodlers right they want to stack sats they don't want that they want to force you to spend this stuff they give you uh and if you don't they're just going to remove it from your bank account so okay but uh, capitalism is based on savings is based on the community having savings in the bank that's where the money comes to create a society yeah but rock and roll used to be based on like being able to write a song uh, sing it, perform it, uh, uh, captivate an audience, not freak an audience out <laughs> like what we saw at the Grammys. Like, this isn't a cycle, Max. Like, what? you know, Michael Saylor mentioned uh, Bitcoin destroys all your models. Yeah. There's no cycle in history that's this freaky. Like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> so you're suggesting that the, the gates of hell have opened <laughs> and Satan has come pouring out. And he's uh, running the Bank of England. And uh, they're trying to swap anything of value. And uh, money is a, re a reflection of values and exchange of values. And this is why money is something we covet because we like to exchange with other people and we like to exchange with something that they, in, in, in return, can exchange with somebody else. That's the magic of money. It's, it's a language, it's a way to move through time and space. If you replace it with something that has no value whatsoever, you end up with festering, stationary humans shooting up heroin all day Donna was a popular subject for Renaissance art. So here we are, yeah. Renaissance 2.0 in El Salvador and yeah. out there in the rest of the world, Renaissance 1.0 is turned into Madonna, the freak show. Yeah. Right. So the Renaissance from 500 years ago is now turned into the reopening of the crypt containing uh, the devils that are pouring out like another some of those great Carbaggios. Maybe, maybe it's not Carbaggio, but uh, it seems like this is now pouring out of the orifice of Mother Earth in response to an attempt attempt by bankers to turn everything into a collateralized debt obligations traded by corrupt venture capitalists on Wall Street to fund their supersized 500 foot yachts. In the Western world now, it's like you could detach your body parts, your sex organs and like de declare yourself something else. And in Italy, like if you try to put like clam sauce yeah. on penne, 
this is like an outrage against the forces of nature. Like it's like a black hole will open and suck the entire fabric of their universe into it. So we need to be more like the Italians basically and start to think that we need more reason and beauty. The details are important <laughs> and uh, Italians, you know, during the whole period of outsourcing to China, you know, Italian economy mm. was very resistant to this. Yeah. So in Italy, so you still have this uh, belief and I think that's a bulwark against the insanity of um, groupthink and the insanity of um, fascism. So they, they know that if they stick to their pasta, marrying correct pasta with the correct sauce, that it's the really it's a bulwark against fascism yeah. because fascism <laughs> would tell you that any sauce goes with any pasta. Exactly. But, you know, in, in the Italian soul would say, you know what, that's not true. You're a fascist. And, you know, this is penne and it goes with this particular sauce. Don't say any sauce because you're going to get it say wrong. Right, I'm not want... even going to say the sauce, you know, because I know it could start a major brouhaha <laughs> and I don't want you know, tell you got to touch. Tuscany, you order some pasta, you have a glass of Italian wine, you're overlooking the Mediterranean and you're in heaven. OK, we're talking there's hell and then there's heaven and heaven is frickin Tuscany. Hell is Madonna. It seems evident that central bank digital currencies are going to be forced upon us if we want to be allowed to continue our daily operations. But that doesn't mean we can't take some of our money out of this system. And Kaiser's opinion is that we should put it into Bitcoin to protect our savings. How are you preparing for this inevitable event? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give us a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. This is Let's Talk Crypto and we'll see you in the next video.